This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com. Hey guys, it's Abby. I'm here today to show you a shoulder technique that I like to use pretty regularly in my practice. I just got done filming a full hour session that's available to be seen on our Patreon that shows this technique deeper in conjunction with the whole body. But I wanted to get together today just to go into a little more detail on what I'm doing. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. If you haven't already, follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. So we are going to be focusing on Chandler's right side in this video. Um, I've been working on her body a bit, so I know this is a side that holds a little more tension, a little more responsibility. So I like to tune in and make sure, you know, right to left on either side of the spine. See what's kind of going on for her. Start with a little bit of traction, which is my favorite. And also noticing the traps and any other knots or adhesions. This technique may be a little different than what you're used to, but it is very effective and has provided a lot of relief. So because of our daily activities, we tend to have a bit of a collapse in the front of the body, especially these pecs and its connection to the neck. And that dictates how we use our hands and our wrist. So I'm placing a considerable amount of pressure right here under the collarbone. And tapping into her carpals and wrist alignment. as the pecs unfold a little bit. Sometimes we need to bend the elbow to provide a little bit of slack. And that's okay. Whatever she needs so that I can better understand this line of connection. From here, I'm feeling tension around the shoulder cuff itself. And there's this lovely muscle that lays on top of the scapula. It can get pretty dense. scapula is a floating bone, so usually the muscles surrounding it work really hard for stability. And we just want to make sure that it's balanced. Tuning back into the wrist. And it feels like she needs to relax it a little in this position. <sighs> there are several nerves that come out of the neck kind of like this, and they connect all the way down to your hands.
just considering both the beginning and end of those nerves. We tend to carry a lot of tension and pain in the tops of our shoulders in these traps. It's natural to want to dig into those areas. But I found that the source lies within the front of the chest and deep in the shoulder joint. Now I'm noticing there's a bit of binding in these extensors that lead all the way into these carpals. So if these extensors get too tight or adhesed, glued together, they can limit the mobility of the carpals, which are all these tiny little bones in the hand want those to move around as much as possible. So we can take care of our tasks with ease and strength and stability. If we limit the mobility in this lower part of the arm, then we limit the mobility in the shoulder as well. Consider her pain threshold, this area of the shoulders, not visited and palpated regularly, so it can be quite sensitive and tender, however effective. these muscles in the forearm. we have a little bit more room and length in this part of the arm, we can better understand what's going on in the wrist and the hand. I feel some compression of the carpal joints and bones. So just 
just trying to create some space, allow them to reorganize so they can do their job efficiently. Sometimes a symptom of carpals being out of place is losing strength in the grasp. And we just got a little shift. considerable pressure in between both of these bones in the lower forearm. It usually creates a lot of relief. We can be sensitive for some. Always tune in with your body that you're working on and consider their pain threshold. Putting a little pressure with my fingers right under the bone and pulling towards her ears to lift the pecs and bring that shoulder joint back into a more comfortable, powerful position. But any shortness in the pecs will reveal themselves, so we gotta work with that as well. shift I create in this joint is going to affect this one. Now we have a little more room for the lats. Terry's. be a little tender, especially when we get underneath the scapula and what's called the subscap. touched the trap as much, but we're still lengthening just by circumstance. careful when you're coming in from in the neck when the body is prone. Make sure you're getting the right muscles. And 
very light traction considering the mobility in her shoulder I don't want to overexert or exploit the joint from this position as we rotate this elbow in and out I can feel a shift in her traps so I'm trying to understand the relationship flexors. And the shoulder. joint. and getting into the teres at the same time. I'm really creating an opposition here. Noticing how these flexors here are directly related with the tension she has in her rhomboids. Now we've got a little space creating some more traction. And finally getting into that trap a little bit more. Last but not least. important to understand these lats and teres and this entire area, the side of the rib cage. A lot of the times if these muscles are glued together, we're unable to use them for stability and then our shoulders will take on too much work. Once again, 
some effleurage. The Anthrus Bananas. And I'm gonna come back around and feed it back into the spine. Tractioning the bottom of the trap as I pull from the top. And down. Connecting it all the way to the bottom of the spine. And also the top. I want to thank you for joining me in this video today. I invite you to leave your comments, suggestions, requests on this technique in the comments below. If you'd like to see the full session, you can head over to our Patreon page and find it there. I hope you have a wonderful day. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.